In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a between subjects factorial ANOVA with three independent variables. And the presence of three independent variables opens up the opportunity for a three way interaction. And that's the furthest I'm going to go in the foundation section of the chapter with respect to evaluating interactions in the factorial design, three independent variables. Once you get beyond that, it really does start to get quite complicated to try to interpret and communicate the effect to a reader. So in this example study, the dependent variable is intention to wear a seat belt. And basically the researchers provided scenarios to the participants to read. And after they read the scenario, they provided the chances that the person would be inclined to wear a seat belt or not in that circumstance. So what they manipulated was whether the person liked wearing a seat belt or whether the person didn't like wearing the seat belt. Presumably you'd expect somebody who dislikes wearing a seat belt to be less inclined to wear a seat belt. Then the next scenario they manipulated was the riskiness level associated with where they were driving. So in one scenario it was a safe driving circumstance and in the other scenario it was a risky driving scenario. And the final variable was whether the person was rating for themselves or whether they were rating intention to wear seat belt for somebody else, a third person. So with these three independent variables, all scored on one to two scales, so it's a nominal scale, only two levels, and a continuously scored dependent variable that, yes, goes into negative values because the researchers measured it in such a way that scores negative suggest a very low level of inclination to wear a seat belt, and positive values were an inclination to wear a seat belt. So we've got a two by two by two between subjects factorial ANOVA. Now the principles associated with conducting the analysis are exactly the same as a 2 by 2 factorial ANOVA. The distinction is how to unpack a three-way interaction if one is observed. So all other principles are the same. In terms of interpreting main effects in the presence of an interaction, you have to conduct simple main effect analyses and hope to see that they're all in the same direction. I'm not going to go into those details here. I'm just going to assume that you learn that from the other examples in the textbook. The key point I'm interested in here is unpacking the three-way interaction. So in order to analyze the data, go into Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. Intention to where goes in the dependent variable box, and you put all three independent variables in the fixed factors box. Click on Options, and you'll probably want Descriptive Statistics, Estimates of Effect Size, Homogeneity Tests click continue. You'll want to plot the results. This is going to be very important when it comes to interpreting the three-way interaction. It's important when interpreting a two-way interaction. It's even more important for a three-way interaction. So I'm going to put like dislike as a horizontal axis, safety risky, safe risky in the separate lines box, and self other in the separate plots box. So basically what's going to happen here is SPSS is going to produce two plots of the means depicting a two-way interaction. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Click Add. You can click on Include Error Bars, and maybe in the final result you would do that for the purposes of the report. But for the purposes of actually interpreting the, uh, the interaction, I'm going to leave it out because it's a little too messy. Click Continue, and we would probably want estimated marginal means. There's going to be a lot of them here and I'm just going to throw them all in. So click continue. I've only got two levels so there's no need to compare main effects. If I had three levels in any of the independent variables maybe I would look at that. And then click OK. So here are the results. We can see that the sample sizes were slightly different across the conditions and so the estimated marginal means are going to be a bit different than the total means reported in the descriptive statistics table. Again, if you don't understand what I'm talking about now, go back to the 2x2 two two between subjects factorial ANOVA, the video game example. I go into some detail about the difference between the descriptive observed means and the estimated marginal means. So here are the descriptive statistics associated with the analysis. Here's Levine's test of homogeneity of variance, and we can see that we have not violated the assumption of equal variances based on, a, on the mean approach, which I recommend you do for most cases. It produced an F value of 0.43 with 7 and 124 degrees of freedom, P of 0.880. Satisfied the assumption. 
which is a good thing because the sample sizes are not equal across all levels. So dodged a bullet there. Here is the table with the key results associated with the main effects and the interaction. Let me just fix this up a little bit so that everything is all on one row. And we can see that we could ignore corrected model in intercept rows, just like we did in the two by two. Here we have like dislike main effect, and it was statistically significant. So without considering the possibility of a significant interaction and having to do simple main effect analyses, the like dislike main effect appears to be statistically significant. Whether it can be interpreted is a separate question. But with an F value of 141, very large, and a P value of less than 0 0.001, partial later square root of 0.534, it looks like like versus dislike is statistically significant. And where would we get those means? We have the means right here. 2.49 is the like intention to wear seatbelt value mean, and the dislike intention to wear seatbelt mean is 0.417. So a higher number suggests a greater likelihood to wear a seatbelt. That's what you'd expect. Now that's based on the descriptive statistics and the sample sizes are a little bit unequal, 65 and 67. And so you'd want to consult the estimated marginal means because technically that is what the between subjects and over is based on. So if we look at it here, here's the estimated marginal means 2.5 versus 0.44 is the difference between the means that's producing this main effect over here with an f of 141.91 and p less than 0 0.001 01 yes so next we've got safe versus risky not quite significant p equal 0 0.092 2.88 so you know based on these data it looks like whether the situation is more dangerous or not it doesn't impact people's perception of their intention to wear a seat belt when rated by the participants and then we have self-other, and that is statistically significant. P less than 0 0.001 with a partial later squared of 0.266 have an F value of 45, and there's 1 and 124 degrees of freedom. In fact, there's a 1 and 124 degrees of freedom for all the main effects. Now, the descriptive statistics, let's actually just go to the estimated marginal means. Self-other, 2.05 self, and other 0.89. So it looks like people are more likely to suggest that they're going to wear their seatbelt if they're rating for themselves versus other people. So that's a bit interesting. People view that other people are less likely to wear their seatbelt than themselves. Whether that's really true or not, we don't know. These are just their perceptions based on them responding to these scenarios. Then we have the interactions, two-way, not significant, like, dislike, interacting with safe, risky, P equal 0.31, not significant. The like-dislike self-other interaction, however, is significant. And the safe, risky versus self-other two-way interaction is not significant. And so I would recommend that you not interpret the two-way interactions until you've solved the issue of interpreting the three-way interaction. And I would even suggest that probably the three-way interaction will be enough for you to tell the story you need to say and not have to talk about the two-way interactions. So you might talk about the main effects and you might talk about the three-way interaction. I don't know if you would go so far as to try to explain the two-way interaction that was significant in the presence of a three-way interaction. I'm not saying you can't do it, but I don't think it's really recommendable. So in this case, you gotta try to find the best way to present the data to represent how this variable, the third variable, is moderating, is interacting, with the actual interaction of two other variables. And in these data, it turns out that I think the best way to present that is by isolating the interaction between like and self-other across safe and risky. So I'm going to isolate across safe and risky because that's not actually part of this two-way interaction, is it? But I'm going to separate it because it, this three-way interaction is telling me that the nature of the interaction is being moderated by another variable. And I think in this case it's best to split it. So go into data and split file and then click on compare groups and then add safe risky to the groups based on safe risky. Click OK and then redo the analysis and make sure that your plots are consistent 
with what you want to do. So in this case, you need to make sure that you have like, dislike, self, other in the separate lines box and then add it. And I've already got that there. So you need to have, make sure that it looks like that. Click continue. So these are the two variables that are interacting with each other. And I'm going to be looking at that across safe scenario and risky scenario. And I don't have to write that in separate plots here because I've told SPSS to separate, to split the group in that previous step. Click continue. Make sure your display means for estimated marginal means if you wanted to get that, that you have make sure that it's clear in here. Sometimes there's an error in SPSS, it just triples up. If you've ran the analysis already, the previous three-way factorial ANOVA, it'll jumble up. Version 25, it'll jumble up things here. And you gotta throw it out, it'll tell you it's got an error. I don't need that for right now. I really just need to make sure that I'm going to run the separate two-way factorial ANOVAs across a third variable, which is that three-way interaction taking place. And make sure I've got effect size, yes. So click continue, and here are the results that are going to help me interpret this three-way interaction. So first of all, when we look at the, the two-way interaction, and we can see that there is no significant interaction of self-dislike and self-other when I'm isolating at less risky scenarios. But there is a significant effect for the risky scenario. So if I wanted to interpret that two-way interaction, I would be kind of wrong doing so because the presence of that interaction is dependent upon a third variable. That's what a three-way interaction is. So it's dependent in this case on the riskiness of the driving scenario. So stated alternatively, the interaction of like, dislike, and self-other on intention to wear a seatbelt depends on the riskiness of the driving scenario. So let's look at the plots. We can see here, this is the one that wasn't significant. It kind of looks like it's heading towards that direction. It looks like there's a bigger drop when the person's rating another person's intention to wear a seatbelt from like to dislike. It drops more than the blue line by comparison, but this is not significant. This is still, you know, a non-significant interaction, P.133. And this one here, though, in the risky scenario, when people write intention to wear a seatbelt, there's a, a much more substantial drop in comparison to the blue line from like to dislike for self, when they're rating their, the intention to wear a seatbelt for the self versus the other, it's a much steeper drop when they're rating another person. So basically people think other people are less likely to wear their seatbelt than themselves. And that becomes even more pronounced in a risky driving scenario. The difference in the differences is more substantial in the risky driving scenario. So this is how you can interpret a three-way interaction. Basically, you gotta decompose the two-way interaction in such a way that you're isolating across another variable, the third one, and then you say, look, the interaction looks different. The magnitude of the interaction is different. Now, the fact that it came out significant in one and non-significant in the other is not necessarily relevant to the observation of a three-way interaction. This could have been statistically significant, and this could be significant, even in the presence of a three-way interaction. The three-way interaction is just saying that the magnitude of the interaction is unequal across the levels of a third independent variable. And that's what we're seeing here. The magnitude of the interaction, it's the eta squared is 0 0.036 versus 0.279. That's the eta squared interaction effect, effect size, associated with the two isolated levels. So that is how you can go about interpreting a three-way interaction in the context of a between-subjects factorial ANOVA 